right fish heads. We're on the surf beaches again, storm beaches, storm beaches. And it's just after a storm now. And uh, everyone's been nicely flattened out the way I don't like it. And uh, I'm not gonna fish here normally with round baits because uh, there's a lot of gravel around. And then the fish, the fish don't be sitting on the gravel. So what I'm gonna do today is, Targets are, first of all, flounder, plays, stabs, torbit, but in a different way. We're gonna use a spinning setup, like a really ultra light ground baiting technique, but we're gonna move. We're gonna move for the entire day. That's what we're gonna do. So this is what we got here. We got an up and over, right? With a, with a hair and a circle hook. That's a size one. And it's just your basic up and over, but with some much lighter terminal tackle than you'd normally use. It's uh, stuff I make myself out of spring steel wire. One mil. And uh, we got nearly an 11 foot spinning rod. We got 20 pound braid. We have, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is a 30 pound fluoro leader there. A meter long, it doesn't touch the reel. It's just for abrasion and so the fish can't see the line. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get at it. We've got a mackerel belly strip for bait. And I'm just gonna keep moving until I find some gravel or some sand. I can feel it with the lead because it's a braid. So we're gonna get stuck into this now. We're gonna start here. It's fairly calm today. Very calm indeed. Very nice. Might even get some good releases if we catch a fish. So we give it a shot anyway, we see how we get on. I got me mate Stan. Duh. We're here with me today. Just a, he's a third hand as it as goes. So he can have me bait up and stuff like that. So yeah, let's get into it. First cast is a blast as they say. Right, let's go. So the problem is, right? I'd fish like this all the time if I could, if I could get the distance here. There is something wrong. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's just what I saw that. For the beginners, this is why you always check before you cast. Can you see that? Got wrapped around there when uh, when I was setting up. I didn't notice that the rod must have twisted and I had me back to it or something. So yeah, it's good to check these things before you start hammering stuff around. I'm gonna sort it out. We get fishing again. I think I came up with this idea because it's a bit like uh, drift fishing in a boat, except without the boat and drifting. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that is a 45 gram lead weight. This rod is rated up to 60 grams. So let's give it a lash, see how we get on. Just a little lab to begin with. And stay clipped on, so that's always a good start. So I think I got about, I think I got about 50 meters on that chuck, so. We give it a, we give it a lash. I hope I hook up, this will be great. Anyway, one of my problems is with flounder is, they're not really good to eat. And uh, yeah, that's kind of a bit annoying. I don't want to eat them all, obviously, but one or two will be all right. I catch a lot of them. So to make flounder fishing fun, I thought I'd go ultra light if I can. So I was gonna do that for a while. See how we get on. Just retrieve it and pause it every now and again. Oh. Nah. It's just the edge there, I think. Yeah. Sometimes there is fish right along the edge here, so. It'd just be fun if I picked up like 45 or 50 centimeter flatty on this. Would be fun, I reckon. Maybe it's a new way to fish for flatfish. If you're looking for fun and not food. And I have had torbit here before. So I reckon this could be a really effective way to catch torbit. Oh, 
Right. So let's see how the rig's getting on. I wind it really fast through the surf because it was just going to tangle in a heap, I reckon. So the rig's looking okay. The bait's still where it's supposed to be. So we get it pinned up again and we lash it out again. This time we'll put some more muscle to it. Hopefully the whole lot doesn't snap off and shoot into the sea. So this is it here, this is the bait anyway. So that's it there. This is just a piece of my, uh, mackerel belly onto a size one hook, I think. Although it does look suspiciously like a size two hook. Anyway. And a couple of beads and this uh, coffee packet wrapper stuff just for a bit of attractant and then it's just your usual up and over like I said with these little dinky these little dinky clips I've made here just like your Gemini's or whatever they're little tiny ones with more of a curl on them I've tried this before with standard stuff it, they just don't clip all the time and then I tried them um, the splash downs they're all right but yeah they're expensive and they cause a lot of drag you give it a bit more oh that went a long way nice i sorted out my reel got the budgies out of it which is nice. You don't have to listen to him tweeting all the time now. So one of the reasons I'm fishing like this is because a lot of times on the retrieve in with the big gear, I'll pick up a fish, hook him by the lip or whatever. And you can you can just tell you know you're light, you're light, you're light, and then you're heavy. Just as you get to the middle, like the, the center of the cast there or whatever, on the way in anyway. Might make flounder fishing a bit more interesting for me. Instead of whinging about them all the time. So, the reel, it's just a Shimano GTF A5000. It's an old reel, but a really good one. It's lasted me a long time. I've had it for well over well over 10, 12 years or so. It's a bit beaten up, but paint is only pretty. It doesn't catch fish. And I think if you're gonna spend the whole time, you know, worrying about how pretty your gear is, you're not gonna catch that well. So I prefer to fish. <laughs> it's been bounced off many rocks, that joke. Caught a lot of fish though. And the rod's the shore spin from Phil's mail order. This also, I don't know if you can get them anymore. I think it was produced with Daiwa. Four veils anyway. But it's a decent rod for sure. I like it a lot. There's also a chance that we could pick up a decent trout. That would also be a uh, very nice. Since decent trout are very rare these days. You don't really get small ones in the sea though. Not here. Yeah. You get fairly decent ones in the sea. But they're rare, very rare these days. So the rig's just there in the wash. I'm gonna get it out of there because it will tangle. So we'll move off down the beach, find a new spot. So we're just gonna walk up about 100 meters or so. Lovely overcast day. The water is actually really clear, although it doesn't really look like it, but that's because of the sky it looks grey, but it's it's gin clear today. So overcast, gin clear, moving baits for, for flatties. I think it might work. I hope it does. Okay. 
The water's going to be deeper here than it was back there, so I'll have to watch with the waves now. And I really threw that one. Yeah, it's going a good way. It's going a good way. Found a nice hole there as well, by the look of it. But if you only got a little bit of bait and that this could be the a good way to fish, I mean, good fun way. You know, seek out those fish, find those new spots as well. You know, if you get to a new place, you don't know about it. I think this might be a good way to learn about the area. We're in the neap period of the tide right now. Even though it's only a neap, there could be some serious currents running here. They have signs up and down the roads here telling people not to fit, uh, swim because of the rip tides and that kind of thing. So there can be some really good currents here despite the lack of tidal movement and the uh, weather and all the rest of it. But not today because this is holding ground as it is. But the tide isn't moving yet though. It's about to start though. I think we're right at low water right now, so might explain why I haven't had a bite yet. Might have a small one or some weed or something. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I think I have. Yeah, I have. I got one. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Can you see that? Look at this bouncing around the place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. This is, this is loads of fun. Where are you? Please, please. What have we got? Oh, we got a, what have we got? We got a trout. Yes, we do. Oh, yeah. I told you, lads. What did I tell you? Oh, this, oh, this, dare I say it? Look at that. I believe that's a salmon. Yes, I do. Look at that. Oh, no, it's a sea trout. And uh, we get him uh, we, uh, measured up. I know somebody's going to be really happy now. Oh, look at that, lads. If it meets the criteria, which is 45 centimeters, it's coming home with me. Because, uh, yeah, I really like them. And I know somebody else that does as well. So I'm going to get it measured up and uh, see what the story is. So, unfortunately, for my lady, it doesn't actually make it, so. We'll be putting this sea trout back. <laughs> Getting right back in there. So I'm pretty sure actually that that was a salmon, but I could be wrong. It didn't look like any trout I had before, but, you know, sometimes fish look different. I hope it was salmon. Hope, 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 hope. Yes. So we'll have another cast here and then we'll move off. I have something.
Pretty sure we do. Be nice with a little flounder, I reckon. Nah, it's just a lead weight. Pulling, I think. Yeah. Well, oh, I think something hit it anyway. We'll change the bait. Just a belly strip of mackerel. Make it pretty as you can. I got a lot, so I don't mind wasting a bit. Use the scissors, because then you got to bring a chopping board and other wires and stuff like that, so. Yeah, just keep it like that. Cloth with me. So this is how the baiting up goes anyway. Just through like that, just sew it on, so to speak. And then when the back of the bait reaches the circle, then you just pin it on. Like so. And that's basically it there. Then you just uh, put it on your up and over. That's it there. We were moving. Yes, we were. So we go. If you're struggling to catch fish, it's always best to move. Especially when the fishing isn't really great. It's best here in the middle of the summer. Pretty cool, right? The fish. Not much effort. A lot of fun. And if there was a lot of fish, I think you could have quite a day at it. I think you could. I'm gonna do this tomorrow often. I like it. So I didn't need to go home to research whether or not it was a salmon or not. I took out my phone. Smart boy. Anyway, so the difference is uh, the cordial fin or cudgel fin or whatever, the tail of the fish anyway, is more defined and it's got a deeper V and it's more broad. Apart from that, less spots. It is more streamlined than a sea trout as well. And uh, this is what made me think it was a salmon in the first place. There's a subtle difference, but it is a difference. They're more sleek, the tail is more pronounced. One salmon. This is Billy fishing. If you like it, like it. And I'll see you on the beach. Bye.